My name is Kiki. I am so happy you could join us today. Today's activity is inspired by Nate the Great and the Phony Clue by Marjorie Weinman Sharmat and Mark Simon. Hmm. So in this mystery, Nate the Great, a child detective, must figure out a secret message. How? How can you figure out a secret message? It's a secret. He uses abstract thinking. So abstract thinking is basically using your imagination to figure out what you cannot see in real life. And Nate DeGrate, he finds a clue and he must think about and imagine and figure out what the clue says. Hmm. So I'm not gonna really show you much about the book because that is a mystery book. You have to read it to find out everything that's gonna happen. But all this talk about abstract thinking, using your imagination, seeing what really isn't there in real life, gave me this idea for today's activity. What, what, which is abstract art. Yes, abstract art. We are going to express ourselves through shapes and colors and just our imagination. We are going to imagine how we can explain ourselves without using words. Just using shapes and colors and art. Yes, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? How can you express yourself without words? So this is the activity for today. So, I love this activity because I just love using my imagination and using my creativity to just express myself. I love expressing myself. And I love to just think about, hmm, what shape describes me? You know, usually I feel like I'm more of a triangle. Why? It's just how I feel. Triangles are pretty cool. I think I'm cool. So anyway, today's activity is inspired by this book, is about abstract thinking, but there's also a lot of good to come from this. The activity supports children's abstract thinking, which is again a skill needed for children to actually just live and do well in everyday life because the skill is needed for math, science, and language classes, literacy classes. Math and science uses abstract thinking to solve mathematical and scientific problems. Abstract thinking supports problem solving, just how I did in Nate the Great and the Phony Clue, because it helps children to imagine and think through a problem without having to try out the solution in real life. Abstract thinking is also important for literacy skills as it allows children to theorize what will happen next, or imagine alternative endings in a story. This activity also supports children's gross motor skills as they grip the supplies to do the activity, use scissors with parental permission. So basically, this activity is fun and it has so many benefits for children. So today is going to follow a format that is listed behind me. So first we have our page, the introduction about the book and the activity, and then next we have the icebreaker, which is basically just, you know, us talking and, you know, breaking the ice between us. After that, we have the how-to, which is, I'm going to show you how you can use the, su the supplies to do the activity. But there are, you know, many ways to do the activity. It's all up to you, really. Then we have the connections, which is basically me talking about other books and other things you can do to support your understanding of abstract thinking and abstract art. Followed by that is the goodbye. Yeah, we don't have to think about that yet. Let's go on to the icebreaker. What would you create if you were stranded on an island alone and only had trees, sand, grass, and rocks? What can you create with that? Uh, I know what I can create. A shelter. Yeah, someplace to be. Using branches and grass for the bed. What would you create? You may have received supplies for today.
today's activity in a grab-and-go kit available at COP locations. Your adult can call 412-622-3114 to learn more about these kits. If you don't have a kit, that's okay. You can use supplies you already have at home. Like for me, I'm using colored paper, I'm using markers, I'm using scissors, and glue. What do you have at home that you can use for this activity? Hmm. Hmm. But, you know, we are happy to have you anyway, you know, just, and we want to know what you would want to do. So just please let us know in the comments. Always happy to have you. And to, again, like I said before, today's activity explores abstract thinking by having children express themselves through shapes and colors. So I will now show you how you use these activity materials to create your very own abstract artwork. What shapes and colors will you use in your artwork? What do you want your artwork to say about you? So what colors and shapes show this? So for me, I use a lot of triangles. Would this color and shape of blue and triangles show? Is one, I like the water. These remind me of waves. You know how waves go along and yes, it looks like triangles to me. Not only does this show that I like the water and that I like doing things on those waters such as kayaking and swimming, these shapes also show that I like to fly. The triangles remind me of the wings on a plane. Also, when you go across water, to me, that, that shows like traveling, that shows transportation. And so these just show that I just really like to travel and I like to be in the water and do water things. My cat heel has triangle ears and a triangle nose, a circle face and circle eyes, and he's yellow. So this, this cat, is my cat. I have a cat named Chicago when I was a kid and now I have a cat named Jack. And so this represents both Jack and Chicago. And I, I drew everything in purple because purple is actually my favorite color. And so this really shows my love for cats, my love for my cat now, and my love for my cat in the past, and my favorite color. This one I made out of purple again. See, I drew purple because purple's my favorite color. And this is a smile. So to make this smile, I drew a half circle. I drew this. I'm just drew a lot of shapes. So this is a smile, you see the teeth? You see the tongue, because I like to smile, I like to laugh, I like to have fun. Um, I just like to see things on the bright side. And this is, represents grass, because I like being outside. I like being in nature, and I like, you know, I just, I just like a lot of nature stuff, so I like to um, eat. Also, like lots of vegetables. I'm actually a vegetarian. And so this just really shows like different aspects of my personality. And I use shapes in different colors to show this. And it's on orange background because orange is just very pretty with the color purple. So what kind of shapes do you use? What did you want to show about yourself? Who did you want to show? Like the who for me was Chicago and Jack, my cats. 
but who do who do you want to show or what just what part of you in your life do you want to put into your abstract art if you like today's activity and are interested in learning more about problem solving and abstract thinking check out nathan great and the phony clue by marjorie wyman shormack and Mark Simon to learn more about abstract art and expressing yourself with art, check out the noisy paint box, the colors and cells of Kandinsky abstract art, a children's biography book on Vasily Kandinsky, one of the first painters of abstract art written by Barb Rosenstock and illustrated by Mary Grant Craig. You can also check out Nico draws a feeling, a children's book about a boy's creative process and how he uses abstract art to express himself. Written by Bob Raska and illustrated by Simone Shin. These tiles are available on Hoopla or Overdrive, digital platforms of ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, comics, and video titles accessible on our website, CarnegieLibrary.org. If you don't have a library card already, it's okay. You can sign up for one on our website or by stopping by one of our locations with your parent or a grown up. If you have a question about this, call 412 622 3114 and the librarian will be ready to help you. Reading books while doing art strengthen what children already know and put the subject of the books into a new context. Mystery books allow children to theorize what they think is going to happen as they read the book, and creating abstract art helps them to express concepts they cannot see. These things ultimately improve their abstract thinking, problem solving, math, science, and literacy skills. If you want to support your child's development of abstract thought, ask your child questions. Children love to ask questions, but instead of answering immediately, ask them the question back to allow them to reason the answer out for themselves. In their answer, you can see the reasoning and knowledge of the subject. Take a walk outside and point out what they see. Ask your child, what is that and why? In the winter, you can stay inside, look out the window, and ask about the snow covering the streets. What does that car have snow in it, but that car doesn't? You may be surprised about how your child answers. Thank you again for hanging out for Kids Club at Home. Tag at Carnegie Library and share what you make today. And keep an eye out for Grab and Go Supplies at your neighborhood CLP location to participate with us next time. We miss you and look forward to creating together again. See you later.